Hi folks, William Stillman, Psychic Medium. I'm back with another in the series of advice on how to find love. You'll remember in the first installment, I talked about the importance of being aware of your own family history and how that family history can affect you in terms of your genetic predisposition to being vulnerable to uh, mental health issues and also addiction issues. And what I'd like to do in follow-up today is to offer you two exercises that you can be employing and implementing in order to help to raise up your vibrational energy, your good positive energy, so that you are projecting uh, high vibration, high energy uh, emotion and vibrations and hopefully then attracting the same to you. So the first exercise is something that I wanted to address because a lot of people who have experienced uh, chronic depression or anxiety and that comes with a lot of low self-esteem, poor self-image, a lot of those folks experience negative thoughts that tend to loop in our head and tend to uh, defame us, tend to be very self-deprecating, very uh, self-effacing in terms of our abilities to love and be loved. And that includes our ability to love and like and to be comfortable with ourselves. Oftentimes, those thoughts come in the form of a, a nagging voice that tends to cause us to procrastinate quite a bit on uh, our moving forward and finding the incentive and motivation to move forward. And it's not a good thing if those voices are voices other than your own voice that you would normally use to talk yourself through something. And so that kind of negativity has no place in your life because it's gonna to continue to hold you back. Because those negative voices are saying to you you're not good enough, you're not smart enough, you're not young enough, you're not attractive enough, and that's definitely going to hold you back. And so what I have found to be effective is that when you find yourself being prevented from moving forward because those voices are telling you you cannot, stop in your tracks, stop what you're doing in the moment, call them out. Call them out on the spot in the moment. And you can say, this is not helpful. This is hurting. This is not helping me to move forward. This is not advantageous to me in any way. This is not kind or loving. And call them out. And if you're someone who is much more blunt and direct, <laughs> you might just say, I'm on to you. Knock it off. Stop it here and now. And when you develop that habit of stopping that kind of negative thought, you're actually breaking one of those old patterns in cycles that we talked about in the first video. So that's something to be mindful of, to be conscious of on a daily basis if you're one of those people that tends to uh, slip into those old patterns of thought that are telling you not, you're not good enough, uh, you're not all the things that would cause you to be capable of being attractive to someone else and loved by someone else. So first exercise, first strategy to uh, consider. You'll also recall that in the last video we talked about how oftentimes people's loved ones uh, who are passed on will come forward through me in a session to communicate their remorse and their regret. In particular, uh, if you're a gal who has a history of attracting to you, men who are very similar to uh, your own father and how those fathers came through and said that they had um, new lenses and a very different perspective absent their human form and uh, their physical uh, male organs. And so um, that tells me two things. It tells me that they got to where they need to be successfully in case anyone had any doubt. And it also tells me that they have evolved in their own way of being, their soul's evolution. And so one of the things that they would have had to undergo in order to attain that new understanding is what's called a life review. And the life review, as it has been shown to me, is not a punishment, it's an opportunity. It's an opportunity for the soul to, to grow 
and to manifest in new ways of thinking, oftentimes it's shown to me as a soul being seated alone in a movie theater. And no one is compelled or coerced into doing this, but there is a sense of, of rightness and there's a sense of beneficial obligation to enacting this process. And so what happens is that during the life review, there are snippets of memories that are shown on this movie screen. And some of it is pleasant and some of it is uh, a bitter pill to swallow when you see the manner in which you have done and said things that have been harmful to others. And what these people have shown me, um, oftentimes the, the fathers have shown me, is that they not only see the manner in which they have done and said things that were hurtful to other people, but they also get to experience it and feel it emotionally from the perspective of the other person. And so my philosophy is, well, I think that the, the concept is to figure out a lot of that while we're still here in human form. <laughs> and so why not get out ahead of uh, the life review while you are still here. And so another exercise that I have for you is to spend some time thinking about the things that you have done and said that you know in hindsight were probably hurtful, embarrassing, humiliating, perhaps ended or terminated a, a friendship or a relationship. And to try to call up as many specific incidents as possible and so that you don't feel completely beat up and defeated for every incident that you can recall in which you have hurt someone and you're taking now responsibility for that, I also want you to call up a memory of an incident in which you helped someone, in which you were kind to someone, and which you were of good service to someone. And if you are a decent human being, those instances should far outweigh the instances in which you were unkind to someone. I am not advising that you do this all in one sitting because that could get uh, mentally, emotionally overwhelming and exhausting. But it is a process and it is something of which to be conscious and aware as you are moving forward and it's part of what I consider cleaning house. And so when you clean house, you are atoning for past incidents, you are affirming that you are indeed a good and kind and decent human being because you are recollecting those incidents, those times when you were of service to other people. And this is all in keeping with the idea of raising your, your uh, vibration, your energy, your soul energy, and then what it is that you are projecting in the spirit of wanting to attract to you uh, kindred souls. So give that a try and I would love for uh, folks to uh, provide me with feedback in the comments section if this is something that you are doing and if it is working, if it is helpful for you. For further information about me, go to williamstillman.com or Facebook, William Stillman, Psychic Medium. And as always, I am available for private one-on-one -on -one sessions uh, long distance, if that is something that interests you. And I am hoping that um, today's installment was of beneficial good service to you. Take care.